Mentor. When I say that word, whom do you think of? Parents? Teachers? Friends? Ah, not to forget, the Toastmaster mentor. These are generally the people whom we look up to as mentors in our life. These people give us guidance and support to grow, to learn. And these people have three skills in common. The ability to connect, the willingness to share, and the desire to help. On the surface, these skills are quite straightforward. But in real life, these skills are no less than superpowers, which means our mentors are no less than superheroes. And that is why I like to call these four the Fantastic Four. Now, I have lived many wonderful stories with my own Fantastic Four. But today, I am going to share with you a story with a twist. A story when the superhero faced a challenge. And the challenge was me. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and dear guest, my story is set in the year 1999. When I was just about settling down in my first job as an interior designing trainer. It was a warm afternoon and I sat at my desk with some blueprints in front of me sipping my coffee. I had about an hour of free time so I put on my headphones and I mentally rated the afternoon a perfect 10. It was all good till I heard a knock and our administration manager walked into the room. I immediately rated the afternoon from a 10 to a minus 10. <laughs> now earlier that morning, we had had an open meeting and we both had had a discord. I had voiced some concern about my afternoon batches not being as enthusiastic and responsive as my morning batches. And I was looking for some ideas, some feedback to change the situation. And then this, our administration manager had said, why don't you try touching up your makeup before every lesson? I said, hey Shalika, we are talking about the interior designing department. Why does everything have to boil down to looks for this girl? Hot mentally. But nevertheless, I did some forced enthusiasm in my voice and said, hey, come in, have a seat. Now, the story of my superhero mentor could have ended there if she would have left the issue for me to deal with. But a mentor, a superhero, would never let a story end like that. And probably, I didn't recognize, but she was a mentor. So she had come and approached me again to talk, but this time with a different perspective. She sat down and I removed my headphones, switched off my Walkman. Yes, the Walkman, it's 1999. <laughs> and then we started talking. She slowly took uh, as to the direction of the issue of the morning. And she said, you know what? I wanted to discuss what you were saying in the morning. I wanted to have a talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. Student satisfaction is something that is a responsibility that you and I share equally. Sharing responsibility? That line made me put my guards down she had managed to make a connect. Mentor skill number one, check. 
We started talking further and then she said, you know what, last Monday was so tiring and I just couldn't wait to go home. And just then an inquiry walked in. I did explain them all the details about the course, but you know, unconsciously, I might have given out the wife that I wasn't so happy to see them. Guess what? We never came back for an admission. Listening to her example, I started understanding her point of view when she was saying about looking fresh before lessons. Sharing knowledge and experience. Mentor skill number two, check. By now, I had started listening to her with a more open mind. And then I did not agree that putting lipstick was a solution to my problem, but then I made a conscious note that I'm going to put in some efforts. And you know what? It did work. So she helped me become better. Mentor skill number three, check. Fellow Toastmasters, dear guest, that day, by applying the skills of a mentor effectively, she had managed to improve a stubborn mentee into becoming better. And in the process, she had earned the glory of a superhero. Looking back at the story, I realize that we very often make a judgment about people very soon. And before we decide what we think about their advice, we think what they think about, what we think about that person. Maybe that is the reason why mentors always decide to express warmth before giving out advice, while mentors uh, always try and build a foundation of trust before they erect the pillars of wisdom. Because it is then when we absorb these advices in a friendly manner and don't take them on as threats or commands. There are many people around us who help us achieve more than what we thought we could by applying similar skills. But we do not recognize them as mentors just because they are not part of this fantastic form. So tonight, I want to urge you all to go home and think of such people. And who knows, you too may find a mentor in your life who's beyond the fantastic world. Madam President.